Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Inizor Education. Uh, I would like to... Uh, basically, it's like the end of the Physics 14th course. It's a topic which I believe is very important. Um, and it's about units. We are measuring all the physical um, characteristics of certain things, processes or objects in certain units. And uh, I just would like to talk about a um, few aspects of um, measuring and, and, and units. Okay, now, uh, I'll probably touch most of the units. I mean, not all of them, obviously. But uh, I, I believe I will just talk about most of the units, explain where they're coming from, and what's their base. Okay, <coughs> so this lecture is part of the course called Phoenix, uh, Physics for Teens. Uh, I think it's the last topic, which will contain a certain number of lectures for different units. And uh, it's all presented on the uh, website unizor.com. The same website has um, the course called Math for Teens, which is kind of prerequisite. I mean, you probably you, you don't have to uh, learn uh, everything about math uh, from this particular website. Maybe you know it, that's okay. Um, but in any case, whatever the knowledge is in the course Math for Teens is required, basically, uh, for studying physics, especially calculus or vector algebra. Now, the website is completely free. There are no ads. Um, what actually makes this website kind of stand alone, it has both lectures, which are recording videos basically, and textual part. So each lecture has the textual notes, which basically is like a textbook. You can read it, and that would be like learning from the book, or you can watch the lecture, and that would be like sitting somewhere in a classroom and probably the best is to do both <laughs> so you might start from reading and then watching or watching and then reading whatever um, but they kind of uh, it's about the same thing every lecture and every note for this lecture notes for this lecture are about the same thing but maybe slightly different aspect it's always useful in addition the website contains many problems um, which needs to be solved. Some of them are solved in the corresponding lecture. Um, now there are exams which you can take as many times as you want until you will get the perfect score. So that's all about the website and now let's go back to our topic. So units in uh, physics. Well, people were measuring different things in a different way um, since the time immemorial, obviously. Now, um, everything is fine and certain measures were established, like, for example, a foot for the length in English-speaking uh, countries like Brits, United States, Canada. At the same time, other countries developed other measures and uh, when it was necessary to do something together, they had problems. So, uh, let me just exemplify it a couple of times. The legend says, and I'm not sure whether, <laughs> whether it's right or wrong, the legend says that uh, Columbus, when he basically discovered America, he was thinking that he was somewhere in Asia, and that's because, and again, I'm not sure that's true, but that's what legends, uh, uh, legend says, it's because he was kind of mixing Roman miles and nautical miles, which are different, maybe. Uh, a little bit m more recent event was um, I think in 1999, when NASA has lost a Mars orbiter, 
apparently because certain things were measured in um, like pounds per square inch instead of kilograms per square meters or something like this and this well that's a pressure basically and this uh, um, incompatibility actually caused uh, some particular part designed for certain pressure but people who designed it were, were thinking that this is the pressure the number which was there was expressed in like kilograms per square meter instead it was actually uh, calculated in, in pounds per square inch and that was a disaster basically so obviously there is a need for something which all the people accept as the system of units and all of them must actually use the same thing well for historical reasons it's it's kind of difficult nevertheless um, there is a system which is kind of universally accepted officially accepted let's put it this way by practically all countries and it's called CSI I think it stands like Sistema International or something like this I think it's in French because it was probably originated somewhere in Europe um, in any case by 1960 actually this uh, system became official de facto standard not that we don't deviate from this system I mean wherever you go in the United States you will see like um, speed uh, on the road is measured in miles per hour not kilometers per hour although in Europe it's mostly kilometers well sometimes uh, somewhere in, in England maybe they still have miles but mostly Europeans are switched to um, uh, they call it metric system well metric system is just like part of the uh, of the C uh, metric system is about measuring the lengths actually in meters that's why it's metric but there are other things like kilograms instead of pounds etc so um, there is absolutely no need to talk about necessity to develop the system and the system was developed now what does it mean it was developed it means that people have agreed that there is a unit of length which is called meter which is the uh, unit of time which is second which is the unit of mass which is kilogram etc all right they have agreed but now how do we know that my kilogram is the same as your kilogram well apparently at that time they have established certain physical standards physical standard of a meter which was kind of a rod made of some uh, precious metal or alloy uh, the same thing with a kilogram there was a just piece of metal which considered to be one kilogram um, etc speaking about seconds for example the time uh, well people were basically having all the people have watch that, so somewhere there was the watch uh, I don't know where, maybe in Paris, maybe in, in, in Greenwich, uh, uh, near London, or whatever. So they were considered to be the precise watch, and all other watches have to agree with this. Obviously, these physical um, objects could not be uh, the real standard for length for mass or for time because everything is changing in our world including even if it's made of precious metal it's still kind of temperature might deviate a little bit well you can try to maintain proper temperature but now your 
temperature is also measured in something, how do you know that measurement is correct? So, we are trying to use our artificial objects to measure something which is supposed to be objective. And at that time, there was a very important decision made. Instead of having our objects, real physical objects, like the rod, which has the length of, we consider to be one meter, to be standards, we really have to build our standards based on something uh, which exists in nature and seemingly constant. So, let's say we have determined that the speed of light in vacuum is such and such. All right. Now, such and such means what? Like, let's say kilometers or meters per second, okay? Meters per second. All right, that's fine. But now the question is, how do I measure it next time? Well, next time I will measure it again in meter. And where is the meter? Meter is in Paris or somewhere else. Why don't we do the process in reverse? Why don't we say, okay, if the speed of light is such and such, whatever it is, we have calculated today, for instance, it's like 299 blah 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 blah, I don't remember exactly, meters per second. All right. If this is what we have determined today, now, to be completely independent of the future, we are considering the speed of light is this by definition, and the meter is such a length that the speed of light would be exactly this number. So we are kind of postulating the constant itself, and from the constant we have the meter. So the meter is uh, 1 over this number uh, of the length which uh, the light in vacuum covers in one second. Now that actually is much more objective um, uh, definition of the meter. It's 1 over certain number of certain lengths which is a constant, which is the length the light covers in one second. Okay, now there is a problem, what is the second? And it looks like the second should be defined before. And that's actually the second part of today's lecture. So the first part I have just, I have just concluded with the idea that our measurement units must be somehow hooked and derived actually from some objective reality. So we have to find some objective reality for time and say that the second is defined by that constant. question is, what's the constant? Okay, so now we're going to the second part of this lecture, time unit. Now, first we have to find some objective physical constant which exists without our uh, measurement, without, without anything. Well, for historical and some other reasons, <coughs> what has been actually taken as a um, standard, as, as, as a constant from which we can derive the time unit. Time unit is a second. I, I, that was decided. A second should be. So we have to measure this constant as we know it right now. And that would be some, some, some kind of a constant. Then we should really postulate, we should really say that this is the definition of the time, of the second. And then that would be the definition, and that would be a standard from which second actually can be always checked against. So what is this physical characteristics? As I was saying, for historical and other reasons, what they have chosen, they have chosen um, the metal called cesium. Uh, I think it has 55 um, protons and 133 
total number of particles in the nucleus, protons and, neutro and neutrons. Now, so what about this metal? Well, first of all, it's a metal. Well, actually, what's very important and kind of very interesting about well, metal usually is hard, right? But you can melt it. The temperature of melting is 28 and 0.4 degree of Celsius, which is about 84 degree Fahrenheit, which is just slightly more than the room, to room temperature. So just a little bit warmer than a normal room temperature and this metal is melting. This is beside the point, it's just an interesting quality of this metal. It occurs naturally. Now, what about this particular um, properties which help us to define the time? If you irradiate this uh, atom of cesium with, let's say, microwave, you will excite its electrons and uh, even the nucleus can actually change its spin. But whatever it is, it gets into some state of excitement. As we know, many other um, atoms actually will do if you will bombard them with photons of electromagnetic field, for example. Now, after they are excited, at a certain moment, they go back to normal, to the ground level of their energy. So first they consume energy, and they can consume in different chunks, whatever it is, but then they are uh, going back to the normal state, and they emit certain energy. Well, when they emit certain e energy, it's related, if you remember from the discussion about atom structure, the electrons are going to a next level. So, if you will um, take a look at whatever electromagnetic fields around this is, you will see that it emits photons, it emits electromagnetic oscillation of certain frequency. And that frequency is the property of the element. So different element, when they go from excited mode to a normal, emit certain electromagnetic oscillations of certain frequency which is specific for this element. So they have decided that whatever this particular frequency emitted, uh, a frequency of electromagnetic uh, oscillations emitted by this particular atom when it goes from excited, spate, uh, excited state to, to a normal, that is measured and it was, uh, I don't remember if I have it, it was certain number um, nine, uh, I, I don't remember exactly the number, whatever the number is. So this number is a frequency, hertz. So electromagnetic oscillations emitted by this atom when it goes from excited state to a normal state has certain frequency. Okay, fine. Now, what does it mean it has certain frequency? It's certain oscillations per second. That's what hertz is. It's one over second, actually. One over second. Sometimes it's S, sometimes it's SEC. It doesn't really matter. I think standard is 1 over S, but in many cases people are using SAC for abbreviation. So if this is the number of oscillations which this particular atom makes in one second, as we know about second right now, so what, physis what, what physicists did, they did basically a reverse operation. They have said, okay, one second is the amount of time this thing does this particular number of oscillations. So they started from the objective reality, the oscillations of this thing. It has certain frequency which is basically 
uh, a characteristic of this metal. And they're saying, okay, since we have this frequency, we have these oscillations, okay, one second is such time when number of these waves is exactly this number. So they have this de defined this constant as being constant and derived the second from it. So this is extremely important. It's a uh, philosophical, actually, difference. We do not define subjectively, based on some clock or something, what is the second. We are defining this based on some objective reality, oscillations of these things, and the wavelengths, and uh, is basically everything is constant, whatever the constant is. So whenever we have amount of time during which this number, this number, which they have decided as being the constant, the world constant, number of oscillations happened, then this particular time period is called a second. So now we can always reproduce a second by watching this particular atom changing from excited state to uh, to a normal state, watching the oscillations of electromagnetic field uh, emitted by this particular transformation, and just count, okay, as soon as we count this particular number, that means the time during which number of oscillations is such is a second. And that's what's very important. Now, um, Basically, that's all I wanted to say as a kind of preamble to system of uh, units, international system of units, the standard. And again, what's most important is the, the way how we have decided to define our measurement units. We have decided to define it based on certain objective reality, like, for example, the time uh, unit, the second, is defined as the time needed for oscillations of this particular kind to be this particular number. So number is a standard. Okay, now, obviously, with any particular number, um, we can divide it into tens, hundreds, thousands, because we, if we're talking about um, international system, so the number 10 is always very important. So as far as the second is concerned, um, we uh, have divided millisecond, which is one thousandth, microsecond, which is uh, one millionth, nanosecond, which is uh, one billionth, picosecond, one trillionth, etc. Now there are also some, I would say, non-standard but still common units of time like minute and hour minute is 60 seconds and hour is 3600 seconds these are also derived units so it's easier to talk about derived units if the main unit which is in, in the case of time it's a second as soon as it's defined and is defined objectively not based on some clock or, uh, or uh, rotation of the Earth around the Sun, for example. Everything is changing. There are not too many really objective um, constants in the world. And one of them is the one which is oscillations, for example, of this particular atom. Probably they could have done some, some, somehow differently, but that's how they have decided, and that's how it is the standard. And there are atomic clocks based exactly on this principle, which are reproducing these uh, transformations of uh, atoms of cesium. And they're very, very precise. Now, um, I think the latest precision is, so we have made a clock, which makes a difference in one second in, in like more than a million years something like this. So that's how 
precise this atomic clock is. All right, that's it for today. I will continue talking about other items uh, on this, uh, uh, either uh, units of the, of the measurements. But again, this lecture is very important because I wanted to, uh, to talk about what's the main philosophical approach to define the units of measurement. It's the objective constants which exist somewhere in, in the world which do not really change. So we are postulating these constants and then we derived our units of measurements postulating the constant, we derived the unit. Thank you very much and good luck.